Welcome to part three of my Ableton basic series. Today, we're gonna to learn how to add a pad to your Ableton live session. All right, welcome back to Ableton basics. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to bring pads into our Ableton session. So if you've watched so far, we've added a click track, we've added a count in, and the next thing we can really start to do is add pads to our session and make them crossfade fairly seamlessly. If this kind of thing interests you, please subscribe, like, share, all those things. It helps me out a ton. Um, I think I think we're gonna enjoy today's lesson. So the first thing we're gonna do, and I've got the session pulled up we've been working on, is I'm gonna actually create an audio track. You can do this in a MIDI way, but I think, I think this is probably our, our easiest bet. And then I'm gonna open my live browser, and I would suggest um, adding your pads somewhere in this finder right here. You can do add folder and add it there. I'm gonna click on this working drive one. This is a hard drive I've got stuff stored on. Go to pads, you'll see I have all kinds of pads here. Um, I like this subtle sweet one, pretty good. I would be lying if I said I could remember where I got these from, but you can buy pads almost anywhere online. Um, I'll be very honest with you, most of them annoy me. They sound massive and have all this low end that I don't need, but we'll address that in a minute. Simply grab the pad and drag it in right here. They usually take a while because they're pretty big files. And it's gonna beach ball for a minute. Come on, there it is, loading in there. And I'm gonna rename this track while that's dragging in, pads. So this is just it loading in. So if I click go. One, two, one, two, we got a pad going. All right, that is all well and good. There's a couple additional steps we need. One is we want this going out of a different output than our click. So we'll change our click out to one. We'll change our pad out, external out, to two. Vocal cues or guide cues, they'll go out to two as well. This is assuming you're running a headphone jack. This means click and guide would go out of your left um, and then pads would go out your right. If you're running an audio interface, you can do whatever you want. You could run the pads in stereo, which would be cool. Um, I'm gonna double click the pad clip. I'm gonna make sure it's not warped and I'm gonna make sure it's not looping. It's doing neither of those things, which is perfect. So this lasts for 20 minutes. So here's what's cool about the pad. The cool part is it already works. It's already helpful. Here's what's not cool about the pad. The fade, it's not gonna fade out for you. It's just when you hit stop, it stops. And then I, I honestly, I always think these sound way too big and just like way, way too much. So we're gonna, we're gonna tweak that. I'm gonna put this back to external one and two so we hear it in stereo. And I'll show you what I do to tweak my pads. Um, I click on it and then I go to audio effects, EQ, EQ eight. And I instantly, I go here and I roll out a bunch of bottom in, like 150 and below. You probably could go up more. There's just really not, I mean, trust me, you don't need 100 and below, 150 below on big old pads. If it's you on acoustic and a cajon, maybe. But if you're using this in a full band context, you don't need a lot. So let's listen to what we hear. One, two, one, two, three, four. All right, that sounds pretty good. The only thing to me is it still just sounds like there's a bunch of low mid junk that I don't like. Find it. Don't love that. I'm gonna pull that out. There we go. So that sounds better to me. And you're probably thinking, wow, that sounds a lot thinner. Yes, it does. It's not gonna sound as impressive by itself. My goal for these pads, honestly, is to sound really thin and just and fill in some of the gaps. I mean, I have a bass player, I have a piano player, I have all this stuff. This is just gonna shimmer on top. So let's solve the fading problem. Um, there are probably more eloquent ways to do this through automation, but this is the easiest way I found to do it. Literally just add a ton of delay and reverb to the audio channel. So I'm gonna click my pads channel and I'm gonna add a delay. Um, I don't want it to sync because that means it'll change tempo all the time and I really don't want it to do that. Um, and then you can make this 500, 300, doesn't super matter. And then I'm gonna option drag and just have two delays. And I'm gonna make this one ping pong just because I want to. There is no science to what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to make delays stack on top of one another. Then I'm gonna grab a reverb. I'm gonna pull it down there. 
Um, I don't want it to process the lows, but I do want some highs. Uh, let's do eight seconds. Let's make the size massive. Uh, let's go 100% wet, see what that does. That'll change the sound of our pad too, but I think we might like it. Let's see what this sounds like. One, two, one, two, three, four. It's cool, it's a little pitchy. Turn the spin off. That helped. And now when we stop, It naturally tails off. So let's test this theory too. Let's pull, let me find my pads again. Let's see how they do changing keys. I'm not gonna be crazy because if I went to G to like A flat, it would sound terrible. But let me do G to D. Let's do this. This will be a good test for us. Excuse me. Again, these always take a while to pull in just because they're 20 minute long. They're MP3s, but they're 20 minute long files. So it's still, my computer's pulling off a hard drive. It always takes it a second. So let's see what this transition sounds like. One, two, one, All right, two, we're in G. three, four. Let's go to our next song. One, two, one, two, three. Four. Pretty good. All right, so now they're fading together. And then when we hit stop, it tells off. Pretty sweet. Um, that's pretty much it, the adding pads. One thing you could do is sometimes these beginnings of them fade in almost too slow. You could do, you could double click the clip and move the playhead um, to have it start in a different spot. Or sometimes these pads, excuse me, I have no idea why they do this. They'll start out where like they'll draw on a one and you hear a seven drawn two in there, which drives me insane. If you, So if you make pads and do that, please stop. Um, and so sometimes I'll, I'll move the start to a part of the pad I like a lot better and it sounds better. So that's how you add pads to your worship set. Thank you so much for watching.